Hey YouTube, welcome back to another edition of Cycle QMX. I'm your host, Ryan Wood, and today we are continuing our work on the downhill QMX. I did some test runs on it. <clears throat> if you hadn't seen my previous video, go ahead and check that out. If you haven't already liked and subscribed, make sure you do that. But we had talked about previously how I upgraded the rear end and bought some parts off of Amazon and upgraded some of the wiring and added the Bosch 3D printed parts. So if you haven't seen that, go ahead and check that out. But today we have an exciting show. I, after doing some test riding, having dual real, dual, excuse me, dual rear coils is really awesome, but they are designed to only have one shock. So right now each coil, so I got another one. This is what I purchased. This is the big surprise right here. So each one of the coils that are on there right now are rated for a 400 pound rider. So total, it's basically set up for an 800 pound rider. Now this 3000 watt motor, I'm pretty sure can't even carry barely a, a, a 200 pound rider. Uh, so if you're over 200 pounds, uh, definitely look at like a 5000 watt motor plus. All right, so here with 3000 watts, single shocks, what I did order are these coils right here now these are machined um, coils uh, which I ordered off of McMaster card if you haven't ordered from them before or had any uh, industrial projects that you worked on or engineering projects where you needed a specific bolt or specific screw or specific piece McMaster card MC MasterCard would be the place you would go and find it and of course they had it so shock uh, fox fox racing the smallest and lightest weight coil they make is 150 pounds which uh, even totaling having two of them that's still at 300 pounds and I'm still not at 300 pounds so what I did is I ordered some coils off of uh, McMaster card I ordered two of them identical these are about eight inch coils perfect diameter flat ground if you can see that already um, they are kind of oily and greasy uh, because it's a machine coil. It hasn't been powder coated or anything like that. I will probably just go ahead and throw some orange spray paint or black spray paint up on here and uh, just work that out because this is, of course, prototyping and all that nonsense of paint and whatnot is just uh, extra uh, for looks. And sometimes, you know, to keep it from rusting, I may throw some Rust Oleum up on here. Uh, just to keep them from rusting but right now they are really oiled and what we're going to go ahead and do is install those right in there uh, sometime in the near future <clears throat> now I did promise you uh, a run on the bike and I did run it I've ran through several batteries uh, sets of batteries and what I've determined is that even with these four batteries here I'm going to go ahead and set this coil down where I'm not going to put that on the camera while doing that I'm sure most of you guys can figure out how to replace a coil I had a previous videos where we installed some coils and I showed you how to take the bottom piece out and slide that little uh, clip out and then be able to pull the the coil off the bottom now <clears throat> continuing with us talking about some of the other upgrades that I did to the electronics uh, so I did order that motor and speed controller off of uh, Amazon and it's already kind of um, faulting out. The 72 volt batteries, Bosch, the 3D printed pieces, all that works great. I get plenty of power. If I'm doing full throttle, I'm only getting about 20, 20, 30 minutes of run time. But in that 20 or 30 minutes, I'm roosting the tires, I'm jumping, I'm sliding, I'm drifting. I haven't clocked it yet but it feels about uh, at least 30 to 35 miles an hour. Now, when comparing it next to a person who's riding a mountain bike, I'm basically lapping them three times over. So if they were doing an average of about 12, 15 miles an hour, and I was going about three times as fast, you gotta figure I'm doing at least 30, 30 to 35 miles an hour. But when I do the test run and I show you the full end result, we will clock it, you will get it tested, you will see the final results. But I guarantee you, it is fast. Um, it, it has caught in air already, and which led me to changing out the coils, realizing that they were way too rigid. Having du dual coils in the rear 
set up for uh, you know 400 pounds each. So now with these new coils, these new coils are rated at 63 pounds uh, each, which is totaling about 120 pounds. Now I'm probably a little bit more than that, maybe 165, uh, but because you can actually tighten the coil down itself and compress that coil, give me a little bit more uh, compression rate, but I'd rather be on the soft than on the hard of, of the riding side for my suspension, especially with my uh, spinal cord injury and my back and my fusion process. Having a softer ride is ideal, but I don't want to be uh, bottoming out, so getting that perfect ride ride height and feel is important now back to the electronics so those Amazon the motor part seems to be working great uh, all that is about perfect now what we did come up with so I did tuck up all the wires so you can see I tucked up all the wires nice and clean got them all ran down here tied them all up Got the nice key ignition, boom, on, off. Got that all sealed in there and tightened up all the cables all up in there. Now my seat belt did break off and my uh, side fenders did uh, bend out. And so I ended up putting some zip ties on the uh, back of them to attach them to the rear um, crossbar. Now back to the electronics, what I was saying, so here's the, the switches and it kind of seems like the fault is in here somewhere because if I give them a jiggle sometimes uh, it'll, it'll go and what I'm seeing is basically it's just losing all power, it's just dying out. Now I am riding it hot and I am riding it fast and the motor is going like crazy and I have gotten it hot and after about uh, 20, uh, 20 to 30 minutes the batteries are pretty hot and they do want to cut out but this issue was happening in the very beginning so I may have already burned up or um, compromised the uh, speed controller I don't know for sure but I definitely know uh, there's something going on with it so I will be um, I, I may get a test run in there or two uh, before I replace it completely but I do have a Kern uh, Technologies speed controller, which is designed for 72 volts, uh, which is waterproof. Uh, I believe they're made out of Canada. If you're interested, I can add a link. But look it up, Kern uh, uh, Technologies uh, <coughs> website. I'll, I'll try to find the link and I'll, I'll put it in the description below for you, just, just to make it easy. Um, but they make really nice speed controllers and they're all hand built. You can custom order them in different length wiring uh, depending on for your application. They also make regenerative braking. So if you're going to be doing a lot of downhill, it makes sense that when you apply the brakes that you could actually regain some of that energy. And with that current technology speed controller, you could do that. So I probably will be upgrading. As soon as this one completely fails, I'll probably go ahead and upgrade to that current technologies speed controller. Uh, this one is relatively big and it has ran relatively fast. Like I said, uh, I didn't get it all on film. It has been hot out here. <clears throat> and it did some smoke and hot laps. Like I said, about 30 miles an hour. But now it's starting to glitch out. I don't know if maybe I've melted some wires in there. Uh, because, you know, like I told you, I've just been throttling it down. And uh, most uh, electronics don't like that. But who cares? It's it, we'll buy new ones. The motor seems to be fine. The chain setup seems to be fine. Everything else seems to be fine. Uh, we are going to drop on the new coils and get that all set up. So while I have that off, I may just go ahead and switch out that speed controller. So that Amazon kit, it came with the speed controller. It came with the motor. It came with the sprocket. It came with the chain. The motor and everything else seems to be fine. So for now, we're going to continue to run that motor and hope that it was just the speed controller that needs to be replaced and we'll go ahead and replace that. So that being said, that's about it for today. If you have any more questions or you have any more things like that, leave comments below. The seating position has worked out for me really, really well. Uh, you can see as it's sitting on the ground, it sits pretty well. Uh, it handles when it jumps, it jumps real level as long as I'm on the throttle. Uh, if I'm on the throttle when I'm going off the jump, 
it jumps perfect. Uh, just like anything, you got to be on it. Um, that's all coming soon. Any questions, go ahead and leave them below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Please stay tuned. Uh, this bike is running. It's run super fast. I'm already burning stuff up. So hopefully you'll get to see some of that soon. Hope all is well. Stay safe. And you know what I say. Come in, check it out. See what you're missing. This is what we're talking about, YouTube. Fox Racing. Air Pro Shocks. Bosch batteries, 72 volts, 3,000 watt motor. What do you think? Should we go 5,000 watts next time, YouTube? Let me know. Leave your comments in the comment below. Like I said, don't always forget. Like, subscribe, and share. All those good things. Anything else? Let me know. Till then. Base. Better YouTube. Have a good one. Oh wait, you're still there? You want to see more bikes? Alright, no, for reals, we're going to go this time. Base.